Good afternoon everyone and uh, welcome to another session on engineering graphics with me Yash Shavla. Today we will be discussing the second part of the curves which was left over, uh, left over a few uh, weeks back. So let's see what is in store uh, for us today. Engineering curves is the topic that we are uh, discussing and uh, the three of uh, the major topics that we will be discussing today are construction of cycloidal curves, uh, construction of involutes, uh, con construction of spirals and we will be discussing some solved examples of uh, the same. So let's move on. Uh, the first thing that we are going to discuss is cycloidal curves and construction of the three cycloidal curves that we have that is cycloid, epicycloid and hypocycloid. So basic trying to understand first that what is a cycloid uh, suppose we have a curve and uh, we have a circle or say we have a wheel then we take a point on the circle or the wheel and then make it rotate on that curve as seen on the uh, slide you can see that we have a straight blue line and we have a dotted circle in which p is a point on that circle now the cycloid would be the curve that will be traced by the point P when it moves when the circle rotates or say the circle uh, moves on the line by rotating and hence that green curve as you see is the curve that is traced and that is known, uh, known as a cycloid. Now what is an epicycloid? Now instead of a straight line if the curve is a circle as you can see on your screens uh, that we have a blue circle which is uh, being depicted by my uh, cursor and we have a pink wheel or we can say a pink circle which has a point P on it. Now this small circle is rotating on the bigger circle so as it moves it traces this point uh, pink curve which is known as a epicycloid. The next one is the hypocycloid. Now the difference between an epicycloid and a hypocycloid is that in an epicycloid the circle is moving outside the bigger circle whereas in an hypocycloid the circle is, the smaller circle is moving inside the bigger circle now it is not necessary that the smaller circle will be the one which will be having the point uh, on its on its circumference uh, the locus of which we are going to trace it can even be like a bigger circle is moving on a smaller circle. So that depends. This example that we are trying to explain you is by uh, this figure where this green circle has a point P and it traces this red curve while it moves inside the bigger circle which is uh, shown by the blue line here. Moving on, uh, let's go on and start construction of uh, cycloid. Now there are three uh, different types of cycloids. One is a simple cycloid, the second one is an inferior cycloid and the third one is the superior cycloid. Now let us first start the construction of a simple cycloid. Uh, the point is on the rolling circle. This is an animated example of how uh, we will go back. Yes, this is a sim very simple example of uh, uh, how the uh, cycloid is formed. I will just play it for you again. As you can see the P point on the smaller circle that is a blue circle is moving on a green line, green line and it traces the red curve which is known as a cycloid. Now let's move on to the question. Now this is a question that has been this will be given to you in the question paper. Now first of all as I always say that whenever you are reading any problem of engineering graphics the most important thing is to read the problem twice first so that you understand that what is being asked. If you are making a uh, mistake in uh, interpreting of what answer you have to give in the question then you will get no marks so let let us read the question and try to understand that what it is asking from us so the uh, this on your screen uh, is the question diameter of the uh, of the rolling or generating circle is D C that is the smaller circle as we have seen in the previous slides the it is known as a rolling circle or the generating circle construct the cycloid it says that we have to construct a cycloid where the uh, diameter of the rolling circle that is a smaller circle is D. Draw the tangent and normal to any point on the curve. Now once we have traced the cycloid we have to draw a tangent and normal at any point on the curve. This is the second thing that is required. Initial point of contact between generating uh, circle and the direction line is point P0. Okay. It says it has given that P0 is the point from where the circle is going to start to uh, trace the curve. Okay, 
so moving on the first step that you are going to do is draw the circle with diameter d and with center s c also draw a tangent directing line from p0 distance will be equal to d here i have taken a vague example i have not given exact measurements because this d will be replaced by any kind of numeric variable that will be given in the question so this is just to make you understand that okay this uh, this is the point now as you can see as the animation uh, shows you that point c appears and then a circle is drawn from the point c of the diameter and from point p0 we are drawing a uh, uh, tangent which is of pi d moving on the second step we have to divide the circle into 12 parts so we are dividing the circle into 12 parts and we are going to name it at 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 so these the circle is divided into 12 parts the more the divisions you make on the circle the more accurate will be your curve so try to make maximum number of divisions as you can 12 is a standard that you can use next is uh, next step is drawing parallel lines to the directing lines now the tangent that we drew from p0 now the similar lines we have to draw parallel to that line from p0 from the points 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 in this manner as you can see there will be a total of uh, 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 lines that will be drawn from 6 there will be a straight line that will be drawn one will be from 7 and 8 one will be from 8 and 4 another one will be from 9 and 3 the next one will be from 10 and 2 and 11 and 1 and 12 uh, from 12 the same line which is 12 and point p0 are the same hence this line already existed now moving on to step 4 divide the directing line into 12 parts now once uh, we have divided the circle then we drew the lines now we are going to divide the uh, directing line into uh, 12 parts and after that we have to erect perpendicular lines from all these points let's see how it is being done once we are now as you can see on your screen the points are getting uh, the line is getting divided into 12 parts and once the line is divided into 12 parts what we are go going to do is we are going to extend a perpendicular right from that point up till the center line which is passing through c now and we are going to mark the centers as c1 c2 c3 c4 up till c12 now we are having these c1 c2 c3 to c12 are the points uh, which are depicting different positions of the center as the circle starts to rotate on the directing line now the next step what we are going to do is with radius equal to c to p0 the radius will be equal to c to p0 and the center will be c1 we are going to cut an arc on the line which is passing through point 1 and mark that point as p1 and then repeat the same procedure what we are basically trying to do is we are trying to locate the position of point p after when uh, after, let's go to the previous slide uh, I'll try, just try to under, uh, understand it this way that when the center is at C point is at P0 now once the circle starts to rotate in this way and this C reaches C1 what will happen is from here the point P will be somewhere on this line and it will be C the distance of uh, point P from the center will be equal to c to p0 that is the radius of the circle so now basically what we are trying to do is from, from uh, taking center as c1 and taking the radius as uh, c, uh, c to p0 we will cut an arc on point uh, on the line which is passing through one similarly from center to, uh, c2 we'll be cutting a line which is passing through two from uh, with the same radius from c3 we'll be cutting a, a line which is passing through uh, three four similarly going to 12 so uh, now the animated thing will be appearing on your screen as you can see that point red uh, the point which has been ma uh, marked is c the next as i move on so this is the this is point one now with center is equal to c2 this is an arc which is cut this is the point which is marked and it is marked as p2 now the next is from c c3 so the point comes as p3 now with c4 the point which comes is as p4 from c5 the point comes as p5 from s so the rest of the things just appear all by itself uh, it will one by one it will appear on your screen from c6 from c7 c8 c9 and from uh, c10 uh, sorry c uh, this is p9 now this is p10 
and finally we are coming back on 11 and uh, as we know that 12 will again be the uh, on this line itself so now we have all the points as you can see we have p1 to p12 all the points now to get the cycloid we just need to what we need to do is the final step is like joining p1 p2 p3 up till p12 to get the required cycloid and that this will appear on your screen this way so the curve which is uh, visible to you in purple is the required cycloid now the w what variations can be given to you in the questions are as you can see on the circle the diameter of the circle can be varied the length of the dire uh, this directing line can be varied say for example if i say that uh, you have to say i consider this as one centimeter and i say you just have to go up till seven centimeters so the curve will start from here and will end from c uh, here till c7 because we in the question it is given that the point will be uh, the center of the circle will be moving only till here so this is uh, the curve that will be traced will just be till p7 so it depends on the question that you have to read out and uh, read out twice and try to understand that what all things are required now uh, steps now the next thing that was required was to we have to draw a tangent and uh, a normal uh, tangent and uh, perpendicular to the cycloid so for uh, drawing the tangent what we need to do is we need to uh, you know uh, we'll take a point on uh, the curve first because it says that any point on the uh, circle will do uh, any any point on the curve will do so what we will do is we'll say up, uh, we'll take up a point q as you can see we have taken a point q and now we are going to draw a tangent and a normal to this point now the next step is now we, with again we have to take the radius as c to p0 and uh, the center will be q and we will be cutting an arc on line which is passing through the center c so we have passed uh, we have cut a line uh, we are, uh, sorry a arc from q to q1 with the radius equal to c to p0 now next draw a perpendicular to the directing line through the point q1 so we get point q2 what we have, we have just drawn a perpendicular line q1 q2 the next point is we will be joining q and q2 so the green line that is shown to you is the q to q2 now we are going to make a uh, perpendicular to q to q2 to get the required tangent this is the uh, this is the line blue line which is the required tangent to the uh, uh, sorry cycloid which is shown on your screen okay now going uh, onto the superior cycloid now what uh, happened in a simple cycloid was that the point was on the circle now for a superior now as the word superior and inferior there are two other types of uh, cycloid that are there so one is the superior and one is the inferior so say for example this is the uh, circumference so for superior as you know superior is always bigger than what is there so superior the point will not be on the curve uh, the point will not be on the curve rather it will be outside the curve and for the inferior the point will not be on the curve or outside the curve rather it will be inside the curve and the procedure will remain the same only the radius will change so moving on so this is a example of a superior cycloid i'll just play it for you again this is an example of a superior cycloid as you can see the curve is quite different from what was uh, traced by a simple cycloid and uh, this is the point which is outside the circle and you can see these uh, these curves have been traced by uh, the superior uh, the point which is outside the circle and the superior cycloid is, can be seen uh, seen on the red part and the green one uh, is the directing line and the uh, red blue circle is the directing circle so now let us see the same procedure and the same uh, example only instead of taking the point on the circle we'll be taking it outside the circle let's begin with the construction of the same problem which was given for the simple cycloid and uh, in, instead of take uh, the point being x mm outside the rolling circle if uh, it won't be mentioned in the question that you have to construct a superior cycloid rather it will be saying key this is the direct uh, diameter of the rolling circle and the point p is located x mm above or x mm uh, for superior it will be like x mm above the circle or if it is mentioning uh, if it is not uh, saying you have to draw an inferior then it will be inside the circle it will not be mentioned the word superior cycloid cycloid or inferior cycloid is will not be mentioned this i am explaining only for your understanding so let's uh, move on back to the screens and uh, see that the data that is given to us uh, let us begin with the construction of the same problem that was given now taking the diameter d and center c of the rolling circle as same as we did for the previous problem uh, this is the point c 
and now the circle will appear on the screen yeah and from the the tangent will be drawn the point p is take uh, this point is taken as p and a tangent will be drawn uh, now the tangent will be drawn uh, with the length equal to pi d the length which will be given to us and from the center a straight line is drawn and the centers are uh, it is divided into 12 parts and it is it goes on up to i've divided it into till c8 just for making you understand okay now next what we have to do is we have to draw this uh, from the center the radius will be equal to cp0 now p0 is the uh, distance uh, the radius plus x it is d here d is depicting the radius and x is depicting the distance from the circle that the point exists and then divide the circle into 12 parts now this is the circle that is drawn this is the circle that is drawn now the point p0 is existing on this point particular circle and now we are dividing the circle and into as many parts as you can 12 I, as i said 12 is a uh, standard limit but here just the figure was becoming too congested so i have divided the circle into eight parts and as you can see this points appearing on your screen seven and finally eight will appear now the next step will be we have to draw a line parallel to the directing line and passing through one to eight uh, first this line is drawn and one by one all the lines will start appearing on your screen okay so these are the total lines which from four this is passing from three and five this is passing from two and six the center line is passing from one and seven the directing line is passing and from uh, p0 or p8 this particular line is passing moving on the next step is with now again with radius equal to c p0 and center is equal to one we have to cut an arc on the horizontal line passing through point one and then mark it as p1 what is going to happen is now c to p0 now the radius it will be more than the radius so now the center will be c1 and then the, mar uh, the point is marked as p0 and the c uh, the same thing is taken as we did in the previous problem from c1 to p1 i have um, cut an arc and marked it as p1 from c2 i have cut an arc here to p2 the radius will equal will be equal to c to p0 and the centers will vary Similar.